Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So if you have not read the blog associated with this video on integer attacks, please do so before watching this video or it will make absolutely no sense. So going forward on each of the vulnerability sections within this course, most of the learning happens in the blog, as I mentioned in the intro video, and a lot of the walkthroughs associated with that blog will happen in video form. In this video, we're gonna take a look at an attack on chain via etherscan.io. You'll find the link in the blog to this exact contract. Once you open up that link, you're gonna be presented with the page I'm looking at right now, which is etherscan.io. So etherscan is a view into the Ethereum blockchain, meaning that you can see all of the transactions that happen on the blockchain. You can see the deployed code as well as information about the contracts and people's wallets and what actually is contained in them. So although people think that the blockchain is completely anonymous and you can't see anything and you can't track anything, it's not really the case. It's what we call pseudo-anonymous, meaning that all of the information is free, open, and public for anybody to view. However, until you actually tie your addresses to the outside world via buying something with the transaction or adding or removing money to a bank account, they don't really know who owns what address. But in something like Etherscan, you can track the usage of a token across many different exchanges and transactions and correlate it together. And as soon as you can tie that to a real world transaction, you can now tie that identity to all of their movement on the Ethereum blockchain. What we're gonna use it for in this case is to track the attack on BEC token. Looking at the contract that we have open, you'll notice I have the contract tab selected. And what this does is it shows me the information about this contract, being that it's the BEC token. It's using an older compiler version of 4.19. I can take a look at the source code right here and I can just cruise through there or I can search through it. I can also see the contract ABI file, which as we stated earlier, is like an API into the smart contract where you know how to call functions and you know how to call variables and actually get information about those. You can actually copy paste that, use that with web three in the console or within your web application and interact with this contract. You also have the bytecode representation of this contract down here. But what we're gonna focus on right now is take a look at a vulnerable function. So what I did here is I just searched for batch by hitting control F and then typing in batch. And it will bring up the function batch transfer right here. And this is the vulnerable function that we're gonna talk about. And it's similar to the batch overflow that we looked at previously in the blog and it functions pretty much the exact same way. So what's happening here is we have a, an array coming in of receivers, and we have the value that each of these receivers is going to actually get. Now, these are both user-controlled inputs, and when we get our receivers, we're gonna take the length of that, so if there's two people that are receiving funds from this batch transfer, this CNT value will equal two. So keep that in mind. This is just the number of people in the array. This CNT value is then used on the next line in multiplication. It's saying the number of users times the value we're sending to each user is gonna be placed in the total amount being sent by this batch transfer. But it's never actually checking if these two user controllable values when multiplied together overrun the UINT256 limitations and wrapping back around to zero. So because of this, we can send a value that when multiplied by two, wraps right back around to zero. So amount is now equal to zero and it's never checked that it overran. The problem is that this amount is then used in require checks. For example, on line 263, we check that the balance of the sender is greater than the amount but our amount was overflowed and is now equal to zero, meaning that the sender's balance will always be greater than zero. So this check will pass. 
once we pass that, we head down and we start actually sending values and updating balances. So on line 265, we say, okay, cool. The sender's balance is going to be equal to subtracting the amount. So the total amount being sent. That makes sense. Logically, that makes sense. However, because we overran that amount, we're now subtracting zero from the balance of the sender, meaning that they're going to retain whatever original balance that they had. Then we're going to run a loop that runs twice because we're using the CNT value, which is two in this particular example. And we're going to loop through this twice and we're both going to update the receiver's balance by adding the value we're sending. Now this value is not the amount. This value is the initial large value when multiplied by two will overrun the amount value. So we're going to add that very large value to the balance of each receiver and then we're also going to use that same value and transfer that to each of the receivers meaning that we never subtracted any amount whatsoever from the sender yet we still sent that large value to both of the receivers because we overflowed the amount here used it in our checks and then used the actual original value to send the transactions so I hope that all makes sense. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trace a real attack on etherscan.io and actually see what happened during this real attack and go through the transaction to see how that's actually set up, followed by taking this function, putting it in our own contract and exploiting it ourselves. So we get a real feel for what actually happened in real life during this attack. So if that sounds good to you, I'll check you out in the next video where we go through the on-chain attack. And then in the video after that, we're actually going to recreate this attack in our local blockchain. If you learned something today, hit the like button. If you have any questions, please post them below. And if you know anybody else who would benefit from this series or you want to help me out, post it out to your social medias and give me a shout. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you at the next video.